Welcome back to the video darkroom. Uh, this time we're going to talk about LRF files. So what are LRF files? What are they for? What will you do with them? I'm talking about them in the context of DJI drones. A quick web search will reveal that they could be location registration functions. They could be little rubber feet. They could be last return filed. They could be low resolution Fox. I think you might need to look that one up in the urban dictionary. It's probably not what you think. It could be luteinizing hormone releasing factor. And I have no clue what that might possibly be. The list is absolutely endless, but in actual fact, LRF in the context of DJI drone stands for low resolution file. Basically, they're proxies. You'll find those files in the DJI Not Not One folder on the SD card from your drone. If you've been shooting video, that is, and I'm basic, basing my experience on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. In that folder, you will have MP4 files. You'll also have SRT files, which are subtitle files and contain information on the attitude of the drone, the location of the drone, the speed of the drone and camera detail. I have another video which covers those SRT files in detail and I'll link that up here if you want to check that out. As well as those SRT files, there are these LRF files that are there, the low resolution files. The LRF files will certainly be present if you've been shooting video because there is no option to switch them off, unlike the SRT files. And the reason for that is that they are used as part of the DJI system of being able to play back videos um, and, and such. They are H.264 files. It could be that you're shooting one of the log profiles and you're shooting in um, H.265 on your drone, but the H.264 files are easier to process um, and they are 720p. There's no soundtrack with them um, and so they are like fairly small low resolution files. They add up to about 10% of the total space on your SD card so it's not a big overhead to have them but they have their use as I say in being able to play back. So if you go in to the playback option on the controller press the play icon, you will find after a moment that a set of thumbnails will come up of all the videos that are currently on your drone. That is all the LRF files that are on the SD card of your drone. If you tap on one of those, it will allow you to preview that file and it will show on the screen that what you're watching is a low resolution preview. In other words, it is the LRF file that is being played. The full size video file, um, especially if it's a 10 bit DLOG M or HLG file, would be uh, too big to quickly download onto the controller. So the LRF file provides that quick and easy way to preview what's on your drone. So that's the first and the, and the primary reason for the existence of these files. But there is one other thing that may be useful to you, depending on what kind of PC or Mac that you process your videos on. If, for example, you are shooting one of the 10 bit profiles, then maybe if your computer is not um, really particularly powerful, you might want to use proxies in order to speed up the scrubbing forwards and backwards um, through the track on, on those files. And if that is the case, then you can use those LRF files as proxies in order to speed up the experience on your editing either in Premiere Pro or in DaVinci Resolve. Here's the workflow that I use for managing these files. I have inserted the micro SD card from my DJI Mini 4 Pro into the reader and it has opened up the folders that are on that SD card. I'm just going to open up DCI-M and it reveals the DJI Not Not One folder where all of the files are stored. I'm just going to drag that into the media folder that I'm using for my new project. There's quite a bit on there, so uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to uh, to move that across. So we'll just skip to the end. We're almost at the end now with just about 15 seconds to go. I probably should have chosen a file that didn't have 
or a, an SD card that didn't have as many files on it. Um, this one has quite a few. So the file is now copied. Uh, we can um, get rid of that folder. This is my project folder. I like to keep everything in a media folder for all my different devices and cameras and so on. And here we have the DJI Not Not One folder. I probably typically would re rename this to something that is more meaningful for me. Now at this stage, like Sunset Files, which I think are mostly what's on this. When we open this up, we see all the files that are there. We see the LRF files, we see the MP4 files, and we see the SRT files that I mentioned earlier. So typically what I would do now is I would create two new folders, one for the SRTs and one for the LRFs. In order to organize these, I would type in SRT into the search folder and I would um, select all of these, but not the top one, and then just drag those into the SRT folder. So if I go back to the folder and now I type in LRF and select everything but deselect the folder itself and drag all of those into it and close down the search function. So we now have a folder at the top level with all of the MP4 files in it, which are the files that we mainly want. And we've got subfolders with the LRF and the SRT files. I'm just going to now move into Premiere and I'm using Premiere 24.3, which for me at this point in time is currently in beta. So I thought this might be useful because this will be coming online, I think for everyone fairly soon. Going to just take that folder of sunset files and drag that into the media bin on my project. Just minimize that folder. It's importing the files and I would expect that it's not going to like the LRF files, which is actually exactly what we want because I don't want them imported into the file structure here or the bin structure here on Premiere. So as expected, Premiere has not liked the LRF files and that is absolutely fine. So I'm going to click OK on that and you'll see now in my media folder, I now have the sunset files. I have all the MP4s, which is what I want. I have a folder for the LRFs, but there's nothing in them. So I can I can just get rid of that. I can just clear that out. And I have my subtitles, which contain all the information on that particular flight in an SRT folder. So we can, for example, create a sequence for this if we wish. And you can now see that the, the file is there. Supposing now we want to add the LRF files as proxies to all of these MP4s that we've got. So I go back into the folder um, the media folder, go into sunset files, go into LRF. And what I need to do is rename them so that Premiere will recognize them as being video files. So I'm going to select them all and I'm going to, I typically use power rename, but you can use um, any rename function that you wish. So here I'm going to change everything that has d.lrf um, in the file name to d.mp4 and I'm going to apply that to whatever it finds in the file name and the extension. So I'll just simply click apply to that, close that down and now this folder, lrf folder, has mp4 files within it which is exactly what we want. So I'll just get rid of that for the moment. I'll select all of my original high resolution footage, right click on it, go down to proxy, 
and click on attach proxies. So we want to say attach for all of those files. And I'm going to change just onto the list view to make this slightly easier. If we scroll down to the bottom of this folder, we'll then find the subfolder for LRF files. If I just pick the first one, then Adobe Premiere Pro will link all of those. So we now actually have, and you can see here, we've got the low resolution file linked. Um, if the PC was slow, uh, and this one isn't, but if the PC was a slower version, then it would be easier to scrub through this content. So that shows you how you can take the LRF files, manage them, bring them into Premiere, um, attach them as, as proxies, and you can use them in that way. If you find this useful or educational, and you know more about LRF files than you did before, then please give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.